I've been designing uh, places for people to live for over uh, 30 years, but this was different. I was, got a call and had a conversation with a friend, a client, Ed Nardi, who I've worked with for 25 years, to talk about um, finding a new site for housing in Charlestown. And what he asked was a really interesting question. He asked, what if it floats? What if we don't find a site? What if we make a site? Today, I'll be talking about a proposal for a residential community that's floating in Boston Harbor. It's an idea that when we presented to the mayor, he kind of looked away and said, it's a bit loony. And then I met with the critic for the Boston Globe, and he said it seemed a bit crazy. So today, you get to decide. See, after the work we did, whether you agree with them. Water is essential to us, to our bodies, to the planet, to, the, to everything, and we, are, we all natu naturally gravitate and want to live there. But Sandy reminded us of the challenges of living or investing along the coastline. As Jimmy said, there's only a few ways to deal with it. We try to hold it out, we run to the hills, or we deal with the dynamics of the rising uh, tide, and that's what we're trying to do. The harbor has always been essential it's been a, uh, to Boston's history. We have an intimate relationship between the coastline and the harbor. It used to be the center of our city, and we turned our back on it um, in the polluted harbor a century ago, but we spent a lot of money and a lot of time reestablishing the historic connection to the harbor and providing opportunities for connections with the neighborhoods that line and define the harbor. But we're reminded by the predictions of the rising sea and the potential flooding that we need to re rethink the way we inhabit our coast. Now, my profession is a collaborative one, and it has this weird obsession with authorship, if you think about Howard Rourke for a second. But really, we work as teams, and I had a fantastic, fantastic collaborators, group of teams that are here, Kim, Jisook, and Matt, that deserve a lot of credit for what we're going to be so showing you today. But let's get back to the question. What if it floats? Hell, how does it float? That's where we started. What do we do? We have small homes here in Boston and around different uh, cities in the country, but we found technology in Europe, particularly in Holland and Germany, about lightweight concrete floating tubes that we could utilize. But where are we going to make these things? And we got excited about the idea of reengaging other parts of the harbor in terms of abandoned shipyards in East Boston or in Quincy. How do we get it there? We were terrified by the idea of putting these things on trucks and going through Boston's crazy uh, roadways, but we remembered how they did this, uh, put floated uh, tubes into, uh, to establish the tunnel on Four Point Channel. But the really exciting thing is the harbor itself. How do we animate, re-engage, how do we re-industrialize the harbor? How do we connect to different communities if we think of the harbor as the center? Maybe this is an opportunity. We got excited about the idea of thinking about new buildings being floated, shipped up and down the coast. So we have a plan. We know what we're building, we know where we're building it, we know how it's getting there, and then we're gonna put it together along the shoreline of Charlestown. But architecture isn't really about uh, material or construction techniques. It's about people, and it's a, a social act. We need to re remind ourselves of that. And we needed a formula, a strategy to organize um, that social agenda. There's a lots of different ways to do it, but we're fascinated with the courtyard. It's been used for millennia around the world, in China, Mexico, even the collegiate quads. But it's a way to re-engage people in a communal sense. But this is a different courtyard because, remember, it floats. So what are the opportunities? We have access to water activities, but we also had the potential to reestablish the uh, lost wetlands and habitat that you found along the colonial coast of Charlestown. Now, who's going to live here? We looked at, we did some research, and we realized that the uh, demographics would probably be a younger professional crowd that wanted access to the water and quick links to other communities that surround Boston Harbor, both Inner Harbor and Outer Harbor. But that's a diff diverse group, so we needed to design a diverse kind of mix of units, from micro units to duplexes. We also have environmental responsibilities we take very seriously. We're talking about global warming. How can this building generate energy? Um, solar is at one, uh, uh, wind is another, you just heard about how it might not be uh, predictable, but one of the exciting things is the tide. Can we harvest energy with the rise and fall of the sea every day through the pneumatic pistons that are holding this building in place? 
So I'm going to end with some general views of the building from the harbor, but with a re-emphasis, a really important emphasis about the relationship to the public domain, both to the harbor and to Charlestown. You see the building literally lifts its head to reconnect that courtyard back to the harbor and into Charlestown. So there's also an interesting idea that I think is worth noting, floating, is the idea that uh, there's a, a history of groundedness, rootedness in domestic American architecture that we take solstice and we take comfort in. What does it mean to float, literally, not to have the foundations? And what did we find after all this to answer Ed's question about what if it floats? We have a new community that's living on the water. We have reestablished water, uh, wetlands and habitat. We have stronger connections across the harbor. We've helped revitalize and reindustrialize the harbor. We have a diverse range of of, uh, of uh, units for the market. It's cool, it's beautiful. Did I mention it floats? And we've thought of new ways to integrate or to think about our relationship with the historic coastline of New England. So we also hopefully have started a thought about how we might be able to answer the questions of the next Sandy. So is it crazy? We don't think so, and after the mayor heard about um, the research and the design work, he didn't think so, and Robert Campbell didn't think so either, and actually said something along the lines of, like most good ideas, it's so crazy, it might just work. <laughs> or it makes sense. And it makes sense to us, I hope it makes sense to you, and we're looking forward to working with you to find ways to make this happen, not just here in Boston, but up and down the New England coast and across the globe. Thank you. Thank you.